right, so today we're going to actually start something new. So we're going to go back now that we've figured out what we did wrong on the tests and hopefully got our brains wrapped around everything so far. We're going to take the next step. Uh, first of all, so far, what instructions do we know? So we start at the top, we've got include, we've got the define, so that we can set up constants and things with that. Uh, we have our data types. So what data types do we know? Got int, got float, we've got double, which is twice the size of float. An extra long integer would be a long. We've got character. It's mainly the ones we've actually used so far. So include five of those. We start getting into the logic. What do we have? For making decisions. The if statement. And his partner, the else that goes with him. We're writing funky. Uh, and loops. While for. While for. And a variation on the while. Do. Yeah, the do. While. And then we know how to make what? Functions. We can do some functions. call them over and over. So if you're in my lab, you've been doing that with the high-low gain and its functions that you're going to let you call and that's the work for you over and over. So that's going to write the code over and over. So, so once again, this is going to take care of most of our logic. Now it's just a matter of how and when to use them. Well, we're going to come back now and look at some different things we can do with our data types. One well, of the first things we can look at doing an array. So that's going to be our topic for the next week or so. And of course, this guy wants to be freaky now. There we go. An array. It's got a group of, of consecutive memory locations. That is going to put together structures of related data types. Yeah, we'll get into what all that means. Same name and type, and it's a fixed size. That's what the static there means. Uh, to declare an array, you have to know the data type, a name of it, and the number of elements. So, really, what we're looking at here is uh, we started discussing it before y'all came in. You want to track more than one of something. How about grades? You have more than one grade in the class, right? So, let's say you're, we're taking care of lab. You'll have up to 10 labs. If we were to try to track those with what we know so far, what would we have to have? Mm -hmm. Int lab one, and Lab two, lab three, and so on down to lab ten. And so, any time we tried to access those, we would have something really hairy as we're trying to read in the grades for all those different labs, come back and run a calculation on them. Because then, what if we, okay, we've got ten labs for you. But we need to track everybody in the class. Now how many variables do we need? If we've got 14 people in the class, there's 10 lab grades each, there's 140 different variables we would need to track. Not something you want to keep up with, right? Alright, so instead of doing 
int lab one, lab two, lab three. We're going to come up here and say int lab, and we use the square brackets. You'll find them on the keyboard. Let's see, right there underneath the squiggly brackets that we use for marking off the start of a function and the different guys there. So with that, int lab 10. That says he's going to go out, he's going to set aside a memory location. Right now an integer takes 4 bytes. See now if we'd used a float, if you that's 4 bytes or 8 bytes, you know, by the time you start using, uh, and then if we used a long instead of an int, that would be 8 bytes for a long. So what he does, is, okay, we're setting this up as an integer, that's 4 bytes for each one. So he goes and he grabs all that consecutive memory, then, big enough to handle 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 integers in a row. And he'll put them. And he numbers them 0 through 9. So if we wanted to access this grade right here, which one would he be? Three. Three. That is correct. Zero, one, two, three. That's the fourth element in the array, but its index is number three. So that's what we're going to call him. Is set, that's your index. So lab three. Anytime we're going to reference him, we'll do it that way. <clears throat> so like I'm saying here, like hours and all this part. Ah, here they come. Two of them anyway. They're late. late. <laughs> All right, we're going to pause here. Okay, now, why do we, we want these all uh, consecutive? Why are they numbered as the, the 0 through 9? Why do we have to tell it the size at the start? Now, that's one of the tricks with an array is you have to know how many elements you need at compile time. You can't decide, oh, well, it depends on how many things I read in. Like, I'm reading from a file. I don't know the size of the file to know how many they have, so I'll just declare that later. Can't do that. Because as he hits that line of code, he sets that memory aside. And then you might have other variables coming at this spot in memory. So you can't spill over into that memory. You have to know that size up front so as you declare it. Now, let's see, the reason for 0 through 9 is what it does here is he assigns the memory location to the variable of lab. He's actually become a, a pointer to the start of that memory. So he says, oh, at this memory address, 4F372, that's where we start. From there he says, okay, to access that first element, as if we want to access lab sub zero, or index of zero, we shorthand say lab sub zero, like a subscript would be this is zero out of six. Uh, he says, okay. An integer is four bytes long. We take the size of an integer, multiply it by this number, and add it to this to access that memory. First element, you don't have to multiply by anything. So four bytes times zero is zero. Add to that, there he is. We want labs of three. We say four times three is 12. Add 12 on to him, we'll get 4F372. E. That 
point to him right there. Hexadecimal, right? Because that's how we're going to see memory locations are always referred to in a hexadecimal format. Because in decimal, they get like this long. In binary, you don't even want to see it. So that's, that's why we had you start working on hexadecimal, because you're going to start seeing this memory locations. So that's how, what happens when we see this and why it starts with zero. And once again, now that we've seen the arrays starting with zero, you know why your C textbook starts with chapter zero. It's kind of being funny because of their array index. So there's that part. All right, so we've seen how to declare it and then a referencing of it there. So to refer to it, once again, you use the array name lab, and the position number, or the index of it, being 3 in the case that we want this one. Once again, use the square brackets that are on the keyboard, or the same place as the squiggly brackets that we use for starting your for statements or while statements, all those guys. Same keys, just without the shift button. First element is 0, then from there, Numbers, numbers through n minus 1. Alright, I'm going to take a look at one of the programs now. Once again, seeing code in action will help us a little bit better to understand what's going on. So let's blow this up some. Alright, so look at the screen. This one is the array 01 init.c. I have these all uploaded on Blackboard there with the PowerPoint presentation that you can pull down and follow along with or uh, review at home as well. So let me see this. There you are, our normal guys. So we got to do quite a bit of desk checking today with these algorithms to see what's going on with them. So int survey 10. So what's that going to do for us? We're setting up an array of integers, we're going to call it survey, and there's going to be 10 elements to it, numbered from 0 to 9. And then int index, we'll figure out what he's for later here. So as we come down in here, there's a for statement. For index equals 0, index less than or equal to 10. So how many times are we going to run through this loop? this guy 11 times. So actually it should have left this equals off. But guess what? It'll still run. Index plus plus, so yeah we're going to increment down. Survey sub index equals zero. So what do you think he's going to do right here? Exactly. He's got to go and he's going to wipe out. Because once again, remember, when he goes out here and grabs these memory locations, he didn't do anything to them yet. He just grabbed them. So they still have whatever, whatever leftover garbage was in memory is in there right now. So he's going to go, and by the short little loop, he goes all the way through the list from 0, in this case 10, because he said equal to 10, and setting them equal to 0. Next. Sometimes they will, some languages will give you an array index out of bounds and flag you as you compile. C, it depends on what level, I believe, you put in the compiler for safeties. I believe C will let you get away with it. That's one of those tricks, the power that C gives. It says, okay, we're going through here reading your thing. Okay, you really want to do that? Okay, here we go. We start setting anything above equal to zero. Danger is, you might have different variables down here. 
There might be some other program running in memory that you just stepped over into it and you're setting things to zero in that program. So yes, there is a danger. So you want to watch those closely. Uh, you'll see one way that we, one of our future uh, examples here will take care of that to, to keep you from doing that. Well, it's an easier way anyway, but let's get adding that equal would still do it in our case. All right, now our printf statement here. There's something new in this one. Printf quote dollar sign s percent thirteen s slash n element value. We haven't seen one like this yet before, have we? What are we adding? Yeah, that's our key word here is a string. That's a collection of characters. They've taken a bunch of characters and strung together, and that's the name of a string, to make words. And right now they're going to pass, these would be called literals. They're not assigned to values at this point. They're a literal. So take this and use it. And so this percent S says string on it. And then it's percent thirteen s. What do you think that's going to do? How many characters? Yeah, we want thirteen characters. So we're going to set up our little desk checking guide here. He said to print element. So here's the edge of the screen. All right, it says element. The percent thirteen value. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. It says value. Where's it going to put the word value? Is it going to put them here or here? In this case, the whole idea is saying the thirteen. would be to write justify and get spaces back here between the previous word. That's we're setting up a little menu so you can come and line characters up underneath. So that's what we're getting here with this printf uh, percent s dollar sign 13 s and it's going to take element here is a string literal feeds into the first percent s value feeds into the second percent s then we hit another four and kind of close to this up here index equals zero index in this case less than ten not less than or equal to just less than like it's supposed to be index plus plus but now it's going to do a printf so how many times is it going to print? It should print 10 times. That's going to print percent 7D. Now we're formatting our integer. Then percent 13D. We hadn't stuck a number in front of our integers before, but you can probably guess what this, that's going to do as well. Pretty much the same kind of formatting stuff up as up here. So if we do a percent 7D, we're looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, ah. starting right there. And then a 13, once again, it's going to start us off right there. So we're going to start putting some numbers in two columns right there underneath the column headers. So some nifty stuff to remember based off of here. You might be doing something like that in a lab pretty soon. All right. From there, it's going to print the first percent D gets which value? Value of index. Yeah, right, the value of index for this round. And then the second percent D gets what? All right, we're going to pull the element from survey as being indexed. 
So we go back into there. So first time through. See so right now it'll say plus you know, we're going in as zero. What is the value of survey sub zero? Yep, zero. And what do we get? We increase the index. So in other words, we're going to do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now you got to go to ten. Just less than ten. And we'll find that right now. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's nice to be lined up with those numbers. Right now we will see that they're all equal to zero because that's what we started off as. So it's a quick way to initialize all those variables with one shot here. Put into a loop, put them all to zero. And we've seen our first array. So once again, here we are <coughs> looking at the memory locations. A sub zero, in this case, if that an int array called A with four elements. Those elements we numbered zero through three. Because A will actually be holding the memory location of a thousand. Whatever memory address got assigned, boop, it gets put in. And there we see since it is a four byte integer, they will go by fours as accessing each one of those. We don't want to have to. Well, here they're using, uh, in this case, they're using the decimal for the memory location, just not to confuse you as much. Do you ever look on your debugger, anything real they're looking at the numbers? They're, they'll be in hexadecimal. Here, for the slides purpose, they're just using the decimal numbers. So no C's or F's or A's or anything like that. So, we say I'm put in there, we're taking A0, A1, A2, and all the way up to N minus 1, depending on what our thing was there. All right. From there, they act like normal variables. You can add stuff to them, you can subtract things from them, whatever. So, yeah. even the uh, index part you can play with. See, so they got five minus two in the index. That still comes out as eight of three. You can use a variable in there. We've already seen that. So change them up, whichever way you want to do. All right. So let's look at another example they want us to see here. And stuff them up in size so we can all read it. Here we've got. Our array again, and this is got even nums, sub size. Oh, wait a minute. What are we doing with that one? Look up here, we've done a define, size is 10. Reason we might want to do that is we write the program now thinking 10 might be enough. In the future, someone comes back, oh no, I've got a new data file. We're going to take this full blown now. Here's a thousand entries. You want to go through your code everywhere you found all your little for loops and change the number from 10 to 1,000? Or would you rather have it just right up here, one spot, change that from 10 to 1,000, poop, your entire program changes itself, and you're good. So that's the purpose of the define up top, size 10. Now we say int, even nums, some size. And now we're going to have. 10 elements all stretched out consecutive in memory and our index 
for accessing them. Index equals zero, index less than size. Don't do the equals. The, these these uh, sample programs came from the publishers of the book. So you can find them. So when it says less than or equal to size, do not put the equals. They're going to spill over into other memory if you do that. Index plus plus. Even number of index equals two times uh, two plus two times index. Oh, okay. That means we're going to do a little bit more calculations here. So, I'm going to get my marker back. All right. So we're going to have even nums, and we're going to do. Arrays from 0 down to 10. Yeah, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so now we're going to figure out what each one of those equals. We go through the first time 0. What's this value? Zero. 2 plus 2 times 0. So 2 times 0 is 0, but 2 plus that starts off with 2. So now for 1, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 2 is 4. 2, two times 2 is 4, plus 2 is 6. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8. We kind of see how this is going. 10, 12, 14, 16... 18, 20, 22. Okay. There we go. Once you catch the pattern, you can figure it out. Now, we're going to come back up here, do our printf, the element, and value, just like we did before. I'm just going to cheat. Once again, this is 13 over, so we've got little spaces in between each one of these. Element value. So you can use it for not just clearing them out, but initializing them to whatever you want by a simple for loop. Simple for loop dumps some ball back out. pointed out before, once again, there's a difference in the third element of the array, one, two, three. The third element would be, the value would be six. Array element three is equal to eight. You don't want to get those confused. Trust me, you will. But so if you start getting some things you didn't mean, that's why that's what's happening. Because you're once again, your elements, your first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. Actually, in this case, I went to 11, actually. That's why we do not have a number 10. I went too far. See how easy it is to get confused? <laughs> Even to get uh, me messed up on it. Now, this is the same, not just for C, but C++, Java. Quite a few other languages will do this. Starting these with a zero through n minus one. So just remember, whichever one that you want, subtract one from it for your index number. Yeah, so that's the way to remember. All right. Find multiple arrays of the same type. See so if you can stick them on the same line. So int v of 100 and x of 21. That gives us two sets of arrays, one with 100 elements, one with 27. Once again, I don't like this format. I prefer if you had to just put them separate lines. It doesn't take up any extra memory in the computer. Just makes your program a little bit longer when you print it out. The finding size of each array as a symbolic constant makes the program more scalable. Put that define size equals on it. And then you can also say 
For this one, you can say size B and size X if you're looking for that. Or say num grades as a constant, so it knows how many you're having for that. Because if you're going to do more than one, size isn't really going to help you. You want to do something that has a meaning so that you'll know what to use later on. Ah. You don't want to write a loop every time? There's another way to do it. So we did that other one earlier. Let's see. So what, what did we use the first time? What well, was A the first time? If again, A of 10 equals, use those squiggly brackets like we our friends from all of our other functions, and list out what value you want to go into which one in that order. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And it's going to take those and stick in in the order in which they are. Now we can figure that one out pretty easily, right? <clears throat> now, if you have a thousand elements, that might not be the best way to do it. You don't want to sit there and write to a thousand zeros and hoping you get the right number of them. If you started doing this, I want to just stick them all to zero. Just do one. They all get zero. If you put too many in here, like we said 10, and you put 15 zeros, you don't know what to do with that. So I'll throw up an error at you. You just tried to assign too many things. You said 10, now you gave me 15. I go, go home. We you think you're right. Yeah. See, yeah, C arrays have no bounds checking. So once again, if you said give me 10, and then you tried to access number 15, sure, I'll let you do it. You want to assign 15 a different value? Sure, I'll let you do it. Because once again, what is he doing at this point? Remember what we said that A holds. A holds the memory address of this location. And so from there, there's int. Okay, I'm going to go by fours going down. It doesn't really track the end of this, so you can't go past here. You said to go to 15. Okay, 15 times 4 is 60. Take A, add 60. Okay, here you are. If you really want to, C will let you do it. Yeah, start accessing all kind of stuff and access the entire hard drive. But where do you think a lot of viruses come from? Yeah, so that's yeah, C, C is a pretty powerful language because it puts the power in the programmer's hands. It doesn't handcuff you like some of the other ones do. And so it's a favorite thing for hackers and, and guys writing viruses and all that stuff to use. All right. Now, what we they showed right here, int n and leaving the index part blank. And how many do you want? Well, if you're going to initialize the values over here, be smart enough to figure that out. You said, just give me an integer array, call it n, and here are the five values. So, okay, I'm going to give you five elements. That's how much memory I'm going to set aside. Now, if you fill in a thing without enough, he's going to initialize all of them for you. Here it says, okay, no, that means this. So some different things you can do. What do you believe is the best programming method?
Yeah. If you know, put it. Because in the future, if you don't, you might mess yourself up and then wind up uh, screwing up other programs further down the way. All right. Now right, let's look at another piece of sample code. Once again, this is a, a pretty easy one here. This is number two, array two init list. So as we look, okay, there is no define up top. Just give us 10 elements, and there it's giving us 10 values to initialize it with. No for loop this time to initialize. We've got our same little frame here with the percent %s, percent %13s with element and value to set up our column headings. And our same guy, this looks pretty familiar. From 0 to 10, percent %7d, percent %13d. Ah, some I, instead of spelling it out as index, that's where we get a lot of our times of using I in our for loops. We've seen I and J and the ones we've been playing with before. Because usually I in a for loop is standing for an index. We're handling these, accessing an array. Uh, that's why we have seen that for I most of so far. Index. Once again, sometimes if you start writing a big program, you start running out of variable names if you stick to single character things. I, J, K, X, Y, Z. Okay, now what do I use? All right, and then you'll start using like IDX for an index or spell out index if you don't think your fingers will get too tired. They're your most common things that you'll see there. So in this case, once again, he spits out that same kind of data table we saw before, but with these new values from up here. Okay, do we have understanding so far? We need to understand it now, or you'll just get more lost later. Any questions? because you'll probably be seeing it Thursday on the lab. I'll, I'll have to figure out that part tonight or tomorrow night. So now we're going to take a peek at more examples. Four, five, six, and seven. So once again, the best way to learn programming language is to look at plenty of examples and try to figure it out what it's doing. First thing we see, or maybe the second, First thing is we're still doing our standard IO.h. So how many arrays elements are we going to use? Twelve, yes, they did a nice little thing. And they're going to refer to it as size. You can take a quick peek down. Yep, size is what we're using as our index for accessing at our maximum size. Alright, they come down. And A, okay, A is our array. Oh, notice how alliteration I use there now. Array, make it A. Yay! We got to pre initialize to our values. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 values. Once again, numbered what? What are the indexes for these? Starting here, 0. Index of the last one, whatever our size is, minus 1. So in this case, size is 12, so he's number 11. Int i, int total equals 0. Okay, we're going to do some summing up, evidently. Okay, for i equals 0, that's initialized to 0. i less than size, so it's going to go until i equals 12, and we skip out, I plus plus, total plus equals a sub i. So, first time through, i is 0, total becomes 1. 
total was zero, plus equals i, so total equals total plus a sub i, one. Let's keep this going here. Total was zero, now he's one. Next time through, i is two, i is one, so we started at zero, i is one, a sub i is three, I'm going to add three to one, four. Ah, also keep track of i. The zero, we know it's not one, okay now i is two, a sub two is what? Sub two is what? Zero, one, two. I just what I'm looking for. So total total plus a sub two, we're up to nine. Take me that. A sub three. Four. Four. All right. Now y'all are getting it because we've changed him. 9 plus 4, 13, increment into 4, so a sub 4, we're up to 7, 13 plus 7 is 20, increment i, a sub 5, that is 2, 20 plus 2, 22, hey. 6, a sub 6, 99, okay, they want us to do some higher math here, 9 plus 2 is 11, 9 plus 2 is 11, 121, and goes to 7, 16, that's what we want now. A sub i. There. Whatever i is, you can stick in. Okay, 121 plus 16, that's 137. It goes to 8. A sub 8, 45. 45 plus 182, close enough. 9. A sub 9. 7, 6 is 9, so 249, come back through it, 10, that gives us 89, and there's 18, that's 12, 13, 338, 10 goes to 11, a sub 11, 45, Total 383, 3 goes to 12, what happens? Right, we're done, because we hit, as long as i is less than size, i is 12, size is 12, he is equal to 12, uh, he is equal to size, so out we go. And it prints total of array elements. The total of array element values is percent D spitting out our total. So I'm not going to write the whole thing, but that's what the output would be. So that's going to test. Don't just give me the number. But give me what the printout statement says. Because so that's what we're looking at as output, not just the value in total. We want the output state. All right. Now we're getting in a, a hint of how all this stuff works now. All right. I'll do a little bit heavier one here. We won't work it all out on the board. 
So we get the idea. All right, so we've got response size is 40. Frequency size is 11. I have to figure out what these all mean. All right, in main, we've got an integer called answer and an integer called rating. Then we're going to see frequency, frequency size. So here's another array of integers of frequency size, so 11 of them, equals zero. What happens with that one? Because in this case, since there's only one element put here, it's going to initialize the entire thing to zero. So all 11 elements numbered from zero, zero to 10, exactly, will be zero. Int responses, so response size, another array with 40 elements equals, and here's a bunch of stuff out here. In this case, there better be 40 of them. We've got to trust that there are, even though we've seen some other issues with these pre done things, we will assume there are that. For answer equals zero, answer less than response size, answer plus plus. Frequent, plus plus frequency, sub responses, sub answer, Whoa, what in the world? See how interesting that looks? What's he going to do first? He actually comes in here and he's going to find whatever responses sub answer is. Answer. Uh, oh, now, this was all set to zero. So right now, mean zero, all 40 of them. Uh, no, all 11 of them mean zero. Response is some answer. Okay, we got to step, step through him. That's what we're doing. Step all the way through for 40 rounds. Response is some answer. First one, the answer is zero. So response is sub zero is one. It says plus plus frequency one. That's what he's going to do. I'm going to do a little shorthand here. I'm just going to freak. And see, what is in here is responses sub answer. That's the same as like thing I. We could come up here, I equals response sub A, and then do frequency sub I. Let me just stick that straight in here. So as we step through him, whatever he is, so in this case, one. So frequency sub one is one, plus one. So the frequency zero, down through 10, it is 10 this time because there are 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So whatever was in frequency sub 1, we're going to increment that. He was 0, he's now 1. There's our zeros. Now, Back through. Let's get we're going to keep going through this from zero to whatever response size is, 40. That's as we're stepping through these numbers. So we're going to say two frequency sub two. We're going to increment. So we're at one there. Six. Oh, 
easy way. Here we had one, two, six, seven, eight, nine, seven. Eight, ten, one, six, three, eight, six, ten, three, eight, two. I hope someone call those out to me. Probably six, five. Okay, seven, six, five. Seven, six, eight. Seven, six, eight. Six, seven, five. Six, seven, five. Six, six, five. Six, six, five. Six, seven, five. Six, seven, five. Six, four, eight. Six, four, eight. Six, eight, ten. Six, eight, ten. All right. There, that's what we've done. Pretty much counting votes or something like that we could use this for. See how that works. Because then it's going to come up and give our, our lovely new way of doing our column headings with our strings and the string size. And it runs through from 1 to frequency size, 11. And this time, see what it was, answer was our key before. We're using what's called rating now. It's still the index that we're using to access. But they've given a meaningful name to it. You could use I, right? and this way we know what it is. It's the rating. Or candidate number, whatever the case is that we've been tallying here. And then we print out percent 6D, percent 17D, with rating, and the frequency of that rating, which would be like zero. It's zero. One is two. Two is two. Three is two. Four is two. Five is five. Six is eleven. Seven is five. Eight is seven. Nine is one. And ten is three. All right. Let's see, here's a lovely one. Find size seven. Ooh, this one's pulling in some time in a standard library, not just a standard input output. So they're going to do some other functions down here. Int main, we've got int face, a oh, random die value from one to six. Store in there, roll. It's a roll counter. All right. We're rolling a dice or a die. In this case, it's our proper English. Then frequency, sub size equals zero, so seven. Looking at the size from zero to six for our frequency. SRAND, time sub null. Remember what that SRAND does? Right, it's the random number seed based off the time. So it will really give us some kind of random appearing set of numbers. All right, for roll equals one, roll less than or equal to six thousand, roll plus plus. Now it is not using roll as an index, but he's starting at one. So roll number one, roll number two, roll number three. We're not tracking the individual roles, so we're not storing them in the array. So we don't have to do from zero to minus one from that. Face equals one plus random mod six. What's that gonna give us? Remember as we studied that before? What numbers will that kick back? Let's look at that random mod 6. What are the possible values that he returns right there? Equals 1 plus. Modding by 6, 
Now remember, that's looking for the modulus. That is a, the integer remainder when divided by something. So when you divide it by 6, what is your possible remainders? Correct, 0 through 5. So we say 1 plus that. So what, what kind of numbers do we have now? Hint, hint. It's like what's on a die. You roll the die and roll it out. A number between 1 and 6. So that's what we're looking for. We want it to randomly generate numbers as if we're rolling a dice. And then we're going to, once again, we've got to roll the dice. How many times? About 6,000 because we're starting with 1 and we're going as long as it is less than or equal to 6,000. So that will include 6,000. So in this case, there are 6,000 times it's going to roll the dice. Now, do you want to sit there and count them up manually doing this? Uh, I say let the computer do it. He can do it in a fraction of a second and be done with it. Now, how's it going to store the frequency? Same way we did before. He's going to increment whatever the phase comes up. If it rolls a 3, we're going to increment 3. If it rolls a 6, it's going to increment 6. Now, how many elements do we have for us there in phase? What's the size of phase? We're defining actual frequency. I'm sorry, not face. Frequency. Int frequency sub size seven, right up there, right at the top. So we're going to have seven of these. Numbered what? Zero through six. We're rolling a die. What's our possible values again by the time we're done? One through six. And so if it rolls a three, we Add 1 to 3. Well, frequency sub 3. That's that guy right there. So each time we roll a 3, we're going to add 1 to it. Each time we roll a 5, we're going to add 1. Each time we roll a 6, we're going to add 1. What's never going to get anything put in? Yeah! You see the way around this? Frequency sub zero is never going to get anything. And guess what? We don't care. We want to be able to access these things directly. We don't want to have to do a part where, okay, we're rolling from one to six, but we're going to subtract one so we can stick it in zero through five. Now, if that number is meaningful to us, we can use them directly and stick them in. Just remember, that's why they said 7, so that we can ignore 0 and access the 6 we really need. Perfectly legitimate. That's up to the programmer. You can put it the other way and adjust up if you want to, or try to keep your brain on straight and just ignore that the 0 starts there. Nothing wrong with it. Just remember what you did. Because if you do it this part of the program, you need to do it other parts later too. 
And then once again, he runs on 6,000, then, then he's going to print out, tell us what he got. That's why you can do this for flipping a coin. Ooh, that sounds like a nice one for lab. How's that sound? You can do something very similar to this one and flip a coin. See how many times you come up heads versus tails. If you're going heads and tails, how many do you need? Yeah, you need two elements, because in this case, they're not going to have one reference that's heads and one that's tails. What are you going to call them? Either one or zero. Oh, but guess what? You really want to call it heads and tails? Guess what you could do? the program I can use heads and tails and forget whether it means one or zero so each time a random thing comes up with a, a one I can say if it equals heads or if it equals tails keep your head on straight and you can always do that I was again trying to stop the teacher on what you're doing when he looks down there what you're, you've got an integer whose value is heads yeah because I defined it right there Ah, I can do anything I want. So, fun things there. And you all have a, a heads up on those who decide not to come today. Because you, you've got the trick. i got to remember that when I get home. That, that, that's what lab will be. Otherwise I'll forget it and then we'll have to start over. Alright. Ooh. This one looks like it gets a little nasty. Just a little bit. Too awful. What's the first thing you see in here? It might not be the first thing on the list, but I think you're like, well, it might be bad. Don't let it scare you, you've got to do quite a bit of this. A for loop within a for loop. I's and J's, and so remember how these work. You hit the outer loop. And for each one it comes through here, it comes and does all of these. Then it goes to the second one of these, and it comes back and does all of these again. And commits this one to the next one. So it does all of these again. Comes back up. So if main void, oh, but define, we got size is 10. So here's our, n is our array of integers. Size 10, numbered 0 through 9, and it's got some funky random looking numbers in it for some reason. Right now, it's going to give us a three column header. See, int 0 to size less, uh, i less than size, so it's going to go through this 10 times for our numbers 0 through 9. And it's going to print i or whatever our index is, and the value that's in here, 19, 3, 15, whatever one we're on. But it's going to come before it prints a new line character. Notice there is no new line character. It's for j equals 1, the j less than n sub i. So, this is going to change every time, isn't it? Because whatever it is of I was, so our first time through, we're going to go from 1 to 19. Second time through, we're going to go from 1 through n sub i, 3. Okay, go, go 3 times. Next time through, we're going to go 15 times through again. And seven times through here. Well, what's it doing inside of here? It says, okay, we've printed i, so whatever our counter is, n sub i, so whatever our value of the element is, and then 
I said, it's going to print a character, an asterisk. So in this case, first time out, it's going to print 0, and it's going to print 19. And then what's it going to do? It's going to print out an asterisk, and another asterisk, and another asterisk, and 19 of those guys. After it's printed 19 of those, it comes down the next line, which is the new line character. Come back. One, three, three asterisks, and gives us a new line. Come back. Two, 15, and then 15 asterisks. So that's what he's doing each time there. Any questions? Yeah. It still worked. Yeah, they, they tend to do some extra stuff there. They, they didn't have to do a percent C, they did an asterisk. They could just print it asterisk. They made themselves a little bit more complicated than they needed to. But yeah, just print out asterisk would have worked fine. Good catch. See? Y'all are catching on. All right. And that is where we're stopping today. I was perfect on time. That's right where I thought we were going to. So.